Awesome. Still in section one, we now have completed a review of the tools and of the parts that you need for this course. There's one more thing that's left to do and that's to talk about software and in particular, simulator software. I'll be using simulation to play around with a few circuits and just explain a few things as we go. And I think that simulators is a really good teaching and learning tool. Sometimes you just want to put together a quick circuit, simulate it on your computer before you start fiddling around with breadboards and the actual real life parts. I'll be using a particular simulator that I like, it's called iCircuit, but there's many, many more around, uh, most of them for free that you can use on your computer. So in this lecture, I'd like to walk you through some of those options so that you make up your mind and you decide which one you'd like to use, unless you of course already have a simulator running on your computer. So let's go to my computer and have a look at simulators. Back at my computer and let's have a look at some example electronic circuit simulators. The one that I use and I like for various reasons is iCircuit. Uh, it's available for the Mac, for Windows. Um, you can use it on your iPad or Android tablet devices. So you can always uh, use it to simulate uh, the circuit that you're playing with no matter where you are. I'll come back to this later. Other examples of simulators uh, are th ones such as Part Sim, which runs inside a browser, so there is nothing to download. And this particular one also provides integration with DigiKey, which means that whichever parts you simulate, you can actually pick them from the DigiKey catalog and order them all in a single integrated system and environment. Really nice. There's uh, Circuit Lab, which I've used as well quite extensively in the past. I, I like it as well. It runs inside your browser, nothing to install, uh, mostly free, especially if your circuits are public. So have a look at this as well. And there's many, many others. There's uh, NG Spice. It's based on the Spice simulation engine. There's uh, GNU Cap, um, Top Spice 8. Max Spice 3, as you can see, a lot of those are based on the Spice simulation engine. Uh, Spectrum Software provides MicroCap. There's uh, Five Spice Analysis Software. So Five Spice Professional. Proteus I hear is very good. I've never used this one, but I hear that is a uh, very uh, high fidelity in terms of you know, the simulation outcomes is concerned. One thing that uh, you should know about simulation is that uh, in in a way they give you access to an ideal electronic circuit so components on it that are ideal from a physics perspective unlike the real counterparts which have uh, small manufacturing actually small or big manufacturing imperfections and other physical limitations and features that uh, make it so that anything that you simulate doesn't quite um, reflect reality. As I'll be showing you, I'll be doing a few comparisons between what my eye circuit simulator gives me on even a simple circuit versus what I have in real life. Another very simple thing, for example, um, in real life, you may not be able to find a resistor of the exact same uh, value that you can define one in a simulator, and therefore the uh, the uh, solved circuit will have different values at the end of the simulation. Uh, more about that uh, later throughout the course. Let's have a look at a few more. There's a uh, circuit simulator, a little Java application, quite nice. Uh, Cooks, uh, this is really accurate. This is uh, like a, a very good simulator. The problem is that it, I, I find it at least uh, the learning curve for the simulator is quite high and I've never invested the time to learn it myself. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, consider this yourself if you're looking for a very accurate simulator and check out Kirk's. It's open source as well, completely free. There's Solve Elec 2.5, quite nice, a Mac application, drag and drop, very nice. There's X Spice from Georgia Tech University. There's circuit logic. 
Then a few offers from really heavyweights in this in the industry. There's uh, LT Spice Four from Linear Technology uh, and uh, NI Multisim from National Instruments. So these are the types of simulators that a large organizations universities tend to use as well but uh, they are they can be quite expensive although they do have big discounts for learners and uh, teachers and students alike uh, so uh, there's quite a few to choose from uh, if you can't make up your mind or if you don't think that you know enough to be able to make a good choice i would say go with something like circuit lab really nice solid simulator runs on your in your web browser so you can try it out a lot of documentation and examples that will help you get started so intuitive drag and drop interface got an integrated um, um, it's got integrated multimeters and uh, oscilloscopes as well so you can see the value over time changing and you can see also the the current latest value in the multimeter check this out also you may want to have a look at uh, part sim uh, it's very similar to circuit logic sorry the circuit lab it's the same same kind of generation of simulator which runs in the browser it's free to use as well now let's have a look at uh, what iCircuit can do. So here's an example. We've got a very, very simple circuit. We'll be playing around with this circuit in one of the lectures on diodes, which is, let's see, that diodes uh, lectures are in section number six. And what I have here is a voltage power source. I've got a one kilo ohm resistor, and I've got a diode that is plugged in, connected in reverse. So you can see that the cathode is pointing towards the positive um, voltage on the power source. So what I'm doing here is uh, I'm able in the simulator to just change some of the values, the characteristics of the diode, for example, and see how the circuit behaves. So because this diode is connected in reverse, normally this line here would have should have been on the other side, on the bottom part of the schematic connected to the negative lead of the battery. Um, I've got it connected upside down it's called the reverse polarity connection and then i can go and change some of its characteristics for example the zener voltage uh, this is the the um the voltage that the uh, zener diodes a particular kind of diode i've got a couple of lectures on this later on that we can use for voltage regulator so i've set it to 20 volts and you can see what happens when i activate the circuit i've got a 30 volt battery connected to my circuit 30 volts is significant because it's larger than the 20 volts that i've set my diodes zener voltage to be and you can see that as the current is flowing through it's going actually through the uh, diode but the diode gives me a relatively constant 20 volts out which is the same voltage that i configured in the simulator if i change that let's say to 15 volts and you can see that accordingly the voltage at the leads of the zener diode falls to 15 volts approximately which is uh, the, the voltage that i configured in the characteristics for this part i can make other changes like let's say what happens if i increase the voltage to 50 volts now in real life that would have been a bit high and i would not recommend you doing it but in the simulator why not nothing is going to burn and you can see that despite the fact that i've changed the voltage to 50 volts the voltage across the zener diode states stays at a little bit higher than my original 15 volts that i configured in it so that's one of the characteristics of a zener diode and i'll show you uh, in the relevant lecture down the track how you can use it in order to create a very simple voltage regulator i can change other things like what would happen right now you can see that the current is 34 milliamps what would happen if i change the resistor to 10 kilo ohms 
right so now i've got 10 kilo ohm resistor the voltage has dropped down to 3.5 milliamps and then the voltage across the zener diode connected in reverse is a little bit less than 15 volts it's 14.976 you can see that the in the configuration of the zener diode i've got uh, 15 volts zener voltage at 5 milliamps now because of the resistor here we dropped to less than 5 milliamps 3.5 milliamps so the voltage has dropped below the zener voltage across the diode other things it can do with a simulator like this is you can drop various components so you can pick and then drag and drop a lot of different components onto your canvas and then use them to create your circuits. So I've got analog components and I've got semiconductors and silicon components, There's transistor CDDs, operational amplifiers. There's a lot of different digital types of components like timers and digital to analog converters and gates and so on. And you can uh, use other components that uh, allow you to um, you know, add text labels, for example, onto your circuit and uh, decorate it in different ways. So I'd say pick yourself any one of the aforementioned simulators, uh, get to know it as much as you can and it would really speed up your learning as i said you'll be able to do a, a lot of really quick and dirty circuits and then experiment with them without fear of burning any of your parts okay so that's about it with this lecture um, and this is actually the end of the first section as well in the second section coming up right right up uh, we are going to talk about basic electronics concepts we'll talk about voltage resistance and current we'll have a look at ohm's law and discuss power and things of that kind we'll also do our first circuit so let's resume in section number two